Hey guys, so I forgot to record a little vloggy thing this week, but uh, I figured to check in with my dog is just as good as anything else. So uh, I was 104.6 for like four days in a row there. Uh, and then moving into this week, I was down to 103 in a bit. Uh, I think 103.6 or 103 on the dot even this morning. Uh, so down a little over a kilo on this uh, week of aggressive cuts. Um, training is still in the deload, washout stuff right now, but I'll be getting back to a new dev vlog next week. So uh, enjoy the video. For you, yeah, I have to check out YouTube, but oh, how totally. uh, I noticed you squatting in your new boxing shoes. Yeah. Maybe um, tell the people how those so feel. First off, welcome back everybody, what's up? Um, we are doing the second week of the washout before I get back into another off-season-esque block. Uh, today's continuing the squat progression, so I'm up two and a half kilos to 197.5, and I'm gonna do six sets of four at this today. I did my first set just before we started this little talking bit. And it feels pretty good. I'm using some new shoes. You all see them in the videos, I'm sure. Um, and we'll talk more about the shoes as I get more experience in them and what I like and dislike about them. But for today, uh, honestly, I just bought them on the weekend and wanted to use them, so I'm trying them squatting. So far, so good. It feels like I'm starting with a little bit less pain than usual. Uh, and usually, my squats start with more pain and end with less. Now, I'm still kind of in in that like two or three out of 10 range. So I think very much within where I wanna be working right now. Um, and they feel pretty good. I'm, I'm kinda of liking, they have a, a bit of an arch support in the middle, their boxing shoe. Uh, and that's kind of an interesting thing to play with as I'm trying to root and, and feel it out. So I think I like them, but time will tell. Uh, do you want do you want to record a separate vlog thing or should I just talk about my weigh-in and et cetera this morning? right now. So I'm going to squat five more sets here and then I'm going to go on and do another 20 minute circuit like I did last uh, video. And today's circuit is going to be split squats, some pendulum rows and some overhead press. And again that's going to be 20 minutes kind of open ended sets and reps usually about four times through and I'm going to be sweaty and disgusting by the end of that I can promise you. Wow we might actually have a short video today. We might have a short video today. Um, for those of you who are enjoying the album recommendations, today you all should put on the new, new-ish uh, after the burial album, Dig Deep, and uh, bang your heads and lift some weights to that because it's good. I feel like we almost need to like explain what kind of music it is because we can't show it. Right. And some people are scared of your music. This is scary music. <laughs> so we should have like... It's, uh, it's like a heavy metal screaming it's really groovy, um, you know, a lot of good melody, a lot of good dynamic to the album, which I think is important in metal. 
Uh, that's why I don't like a lot of bands like Suicide Silence or uh, Cannibal Corpse and stuff like that. It's just too like straight across. I like when, when things ebb and flow a little bit and there's a little bit of uh, dynamic to things. So I feel like these guys do it really well. And they, lo they just lost their guitarist actually, he passed away. Uh, I'm not sure the circumstances surrounding that, but right before this album came out, they actually lost a member. So that's really sad, but the album is really good. So go check it out. I think we'll uh, we'll make a scale of like how many screaming Bryce heads out of five. Yeah, in terms of the aggressiveness of the yeah. album. Yeah, yeah. So like, what what would this one be? This one would be probably like a four out of five okay. screaming Bryce heads. Good. Yeah, in terms of aggressiveness. Good. Yeah. What are your thoughts on slow concentric training? Slow concentric? Yeah. Uh, I think that in most circumstances, I don't see a whole lot of utility. Uh, I did actually prescribe that for someone for their deadlift though. Uh, I think that if you have issues breaking the floor and maintaining shape and maintaining technique and position off the floor in your deadlift, I think that a slow concentric could be useful. But other than that, um, unless you're, you know, in the in the case of a uh, uh, like a 303 tempo squat, so you're doing a slow eccentric and slow concentric, I think those are valuable. Um, so I guess to go back to my previous statement and amend it, there are definitely times where it is useful. But I think overall, just tacking on the sake, or sorry, just tacking on a slow concentric, maybe not super useful. Um, but if you have a good reason and it makes sense, give it a shot, try it out, see if it works for yourself or for your athlete. And uh, you know, have a way to assess whether or not that movement worked throughout a training block. MXI2 wanted to know if we'll ever make a how to conventional deadlift video. If we'll ever make a how to conventional deadlift video. We actually made one a long time We made time one ago. way back when. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure we'll make one at some point. I don't know, maybe. Maybe get Taylor to do that? Maybe Taylor and I together will do that. Uh, maybe the three of us will do that, who knows. Connor's got a really pretty conventional deadlift. But yeah, you can expect that at some point. We're gonna get, uh, so the, the sumo definitive guide that we did, we're actually gonna do a squat version of that with Taylor when he's here. Uh, we're gonna get Connor to do a bench version of that. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll do a conventional at some point, but those two are gonna be the priority in the next little while. Uh, I thought Fraser L probably had a good question for you to answer. He wants to know, uh, when using a top single, example, one and eight, yeah. you're training to dictate any subsequent back offsets, would you perform a single for each movement type for that day? So if you're benching and squatting, will you do it for both? Or are you gonna focus on the main movement of the day, like if squat was a focus? Should you only do it for squats and not bench? Right, uh, I think again, circumstantial, but um, I would say that for your competition, your main competition movement slots, as well as potentially your accessory, your secondary movements, you can go ahead and do singles. Uh, I would say for most supplementary movements, so things like split squats, overhead press, things that are pretty far removed from the competition lifts, maybe singles aren't gonna give you the most transference to the main lifts, uh, and maybe you know, you're not gonna get as much benefit from doing singles in those movements. So I think it's more movement specific than how many singles you can do in a day. Because uh, I know I've done sort of condensed dev blocks where we're working with a micro cycle and a half in one week of training and I'll do four or five different movements that all require top singles in a day. Now that does become time consuming. So the more heavy singles you do, the more warm up sets there are, the more time there is loading the bar and those kinds of things. So you have to take that into consideration with time constraints with your athlete or yourself. So I think that's almost more of a dictator than uh, you know whether or not you can do a number of heavy singles in a day. 
Last question is from a guy named Big Neptune. Big Neptune, <laughs> as opposed to Little Neptune. He's, uh, he's asking, what's the best way to avoid stalling? I always avoided legs when I was younger and couldn't deadlift conventional due to a childhood injury. Okay. Uh, that'll change when he found sumo. God bless sumo. God bless sumo. <laughs> I went from 225 to 415, but I'm barely progressing anymore. I was doing west side barbell conjugate method for half a year before I started stalling. Should I start doing deload weeks? Uh, they do not use deload methods, and I feel that's mostly my issue, blowing my brains out every session, four days a week. So, the, the main question is how do you prevent yourself from stalling? Yeah. Uh, the, the, after all of that, yeah. How do you prevent yourself from stalling? So, I think that it's important to go until you stall a lot of the times with things. Uh, it's, it's a good idea to have a number of different strategies uh, and sort of uh, ways of thinking about training and structuring training so that you have more variables to manipulate when you do stall But I think when you hit on something that provides you with a lot of good adaptation for yourself or your athlete and I've said that like a lot this video yourself or your athlete, but um, If you hit on something that works do it until it doesn't basically uh, as long as the athlete can tolerate it and isn't getting into you know those sort of staleness issues just do stuff until it stops working, and then when it does stop working, have enough tools in your toolbox that you can change things up and alter the movements or alter the volume, alter the programming, alter the layout, um, you know, and, and start playing with those different kinds of things. So basically just adjusting small variables and training until you get it moving again, then sticking with that until it doesn't work. So there's no way to really, you know, ensure that you're never gonna stall. Uh, because I feel like if you change things all willy-nilly, you're never gonna hit on what actually is gonna be your your best sort of best practice for training. Uh, if you're changing things all the time, it makes it difficult to, to ascertain what is going to be driving training the most. So yeah, aside from that, changing things all the time, which I don't advise, uh, I would say just be ready to change things when you do stall and try to start associating successful blocks with the variables that were in those blocks so that you can think about it from sort of a, a systematic, um, systematic sort of viewpoint. That's all we have. That's it? Yeah. Cool. Um, so for those wondering, squats were pretty shitty today. Um, a lot of times when I start off my squats, I'll be around a two or three out of 10 pain. And today it kind of just stayed there. Last week I had two sets that were painful and the rest were all zero out of 10 pain. Uh, so could be the shoes, um, you know, maybe that's a variable that uh, threw me off more than it was worth today. Things felt good on the way up, but could have just been the day. So I'll probably spend another couple squat days in these shoes and try to make uh, an educated and informed decision on whether or not these are a good idea for me to squat in before I just kind of throw them out the window for that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's frustrating. So I think that it's important for anybody out there dealing with an injury or progressing back from an injury to remember that there will be setbacks, there will be crappy days. It's not just like, oh, okay, we're better now and everything's gonna get better forever. Um, you know, you still will have painful days and have shitty days and, and be annoyed at training and that kind of stuff just is a, is a part of the recovery process. So try not to get too wrapped up in it when it does happen, which is what I'm telling myself right now. Uh, I'm gonna go on now to do a circuit here. Uh, we got 85 kilos on the bar for some split squats. We got 80 kilos on the bar for overhead press and 107 kilos for the pendlay rows. So we're gonna do that for 20 minutes and uh, that's about it.
right guys, well that's it for today. Thanks for joining in and uh, coming along with me through my deload here. Um, yeah, what are we heading into next week? What's up? What are we heading into next week? Uh, we're gonna be heading into another dev block. It's gonna be still off season type stuff. Uh, hopefully continuing the squat progression back into some heavier things for the bench and deadlift. And uh, we'll see what that kind of shakes up to be. I haven't really, like I haven't gotten the programming yet from Mike, so I don't really know what's gonna be in it. Uh, but it will be a little bit more um, intense than the washouts obviously. So that's kind of exciting. Uh, this will be the last of the washout blocks. I think I'll be back into more maintenance calories starting next week. Uh, but I'd still like to try to continue the cut even if just very slowly during the dev block. Mm, that's about it. I want to give another huge thank you and shout out to everybody who voted for us on the Story Hive project. If you guys saw the video earlier last week, uh, we won. So we're going to be making the documentary. So. Thanks to everybody um, who voted, who shared it, and who, yeah, like it was just a really, really cool community response. So thank you. Thank you guys so much. Uh, anyways, I won't drag this out for any longer than that, but continue asking us questions, because like I say every time, we really enjoy answering them. It gives us some, some discussion points and some takeaway information to put in these training logs, so it's not just a cool montage. There's a, a little bit more substance to it, so. We're always happy to be able to add that element into our videos. So continue asking training questions or whatever questions, as long as it's not about my neck anymore. Um, or, your or my ear thingies, yeah. Anyways guys, that's it. Like if you liked it, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.